Okay, this is part two of um, the general normal distributions lesson. So we're up to the last part, solving probability problems involving normal distributions. So it's important to remember that the area under the normal distribution curve tells us the probability of the event because the area under standardized normal distribution is one. So it is a PDF, we can use it to work out probability. Here we've just got um, a table for the area to the left of a particular z-score underneath the curve. So let's have a look at some examples. We've got question one here. A normally distributed random variable x has mean 100 and standard deviation of 20. Write down the two conversion formulae between z-scores and values of x. So we know that the formula for the z-score is equal to the actual score minus the mean, which in this case is 100, divided by the standard deviation, which in this case is 20. Okay, so that's the z-score. And for the values of x, x is just equal to, well, if we want to get x by itself, we need to multiply z by 20 and then add 100. Okay, multiply by 20, add 100. All right, so question B says, find the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to 110. Now, in order for us to do this, we actually need to work out what the z-score is because the table of values here is for z-scores. So the z-score for 110 is 110 minus the mean over the standard deviation. And when we put that in the calculator, we should get half. Okay, so that's the z-score of half. So if we were to just draw this out, I'm just gonna draw this out over here. Here's my z-score of zero. A z-score of half, let's just say is over here. Okay, we want less than that. Okay, less than or equal to that z-score. So we want all of this. So the probability that, um, that the z-score is less than or equal to 0 0.5 is actually equal to phi of 0 0.5. So just remember, right, just imagine phi is the area underneath the curve to the left of this z-score. Okay, and we want the z-score to be positive um, because the table of values here is only for positives. So let's say, for example, right, this z-score of 0, 0.0 0, a z-score of 0 looks something like this, that's 0, and the area to the left of it is half, right, because that represents half of it. Okay. So here we want the area to the left of the z-score 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 is this, 0 0.6915. And that's it. Okay, question B, we want to find a probability that random variable is greater than or equal to 90. So again, I need to find out my z-score for 90. An actual score of 90 will give us a z-score of 90 minus the mean over the standard deviation. Negative 10 over 20 is negative half. So that's a z-score of negative half. So I'm just going to graph this because I need to make sure I know what we're trying to find. Well, negative half is here, but we want greater than or equal to that. So we want this area. We want to know how, um, what area lies underneath that part of the curve. The thing is, the, the table of values only tells us the area to the left. So, so the area underneath the curve to the left of that says school. So it's actually going to tell us this bit. So we want to work out this bit here. We need to work out oh, what Z score will actually give us the same area. Well, if we had a Z score of 0 0.5, positive 0 0.5, 
and we worked out the area to the left of that, it's actually going to give us exactly the same answer because it's just a reflection. So that means the probability that the Z score is greater than or equal to negative half is actually the same as the probability that the Z score is less than or equal to positive half over here. So that's just equal to phi of 0 0.5, okay, the area under the curve to the left of this z-score of positive 0 0.5, which when we um, look at the table is actually exactly the same as that, 0 0.6915. Okay, question D. Find the value of A such that the probability that the random variable is less than or equal to A is approximately equal to 0 0.98. So what does that mean? First, I'm just going to graph it. We want uh, the probability that the area under the curve that's to the left of A, that all of this will equal to 0 0.98. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to have a look and see what z-score is equivalent to that. So 0 0.98. To the left of which z-score is about 0 0.98. So we've got 2.0.98 lies in between these two. So I'm going to guess this, I'll say is about 2.06 maybe. 2.06. So I'll say, oh, uh, well, phi of 2.06 is approximately equal to 0 0.98. So I'll just say that's 2.06 for a z-score. So if we want to work out the value of a, we can just go back to here. Instead of x, we're just writing a. a is equal to 20 times the z-score plus 100. So a is equal to 20 times the z-score plus 100. So when we put that in our calculator, we get 141.2. So a is probably approximately equal to 141 if we we're going to round it to the nearest whole number. Okay. Let's have a look at question two. A data set with 1,000 scores is known to be a sample from a normally distributed variable x with mean mu is equaling to negative 32.6 and the standard deviation is equal to 5.7. Predict how many scores would roughly lie in the intervals from negative 30 to infinity. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out the z-score for this negative 30. So the z-score for negative 30 is a score minus the mean, which in this case is negative 32.6, divided by the standard deviation of 5.7. So what do we get when we put that in our calculator? Negative 30 minus the mean over the standard deviation, 0 0.456. So I just want to see what what we're doing with this on the graph. So here's my um, my mean of zero. I've got a z score. Sorry, not mean of zero. My z score of zero. My z score of zero point four five six is positive. Okay, so that represents the score of negative thirty, and we're going from negative thirty to infinity. So technically, we want to work out this area here. Okay, so the probability that the score, the, that the random variable is greater than or equal to um, negative 30 is technically equal to the probability that the z-score is greater than or equal to 0 0.456. So what we need to do to work out that area is basically we need to do 1 minus all of this, the area to the left of 0 0.456. So if I were to do 1 minus phi of 0 
right, the area under the curve to the left of this Z score, then I'll get the yellow section. So now we can use the, um, the table of values. We can have a look and see what the area to the left of that Z score is. So 0 0.456, 0.456 is in between these two. So I'm going to guess, <clears throat> I would say it's about 0 0.67. Okay, 0 0.67. Because the question says to pre predict, so I'm, it's a good guess. And that's 0 0.33. Okay, so that's the probability of the scores being from negative 30 to infinity. The question says predict how many scores, so not just the probability. Because there are 1,000 scores in this set of data, I'm just going to multiply the 0 0.33 by 1,000. So therefore, about 0 0.33 times 1,000, which is 330 scores, lie within the interval from negative 30 to infinity. Okay, let's do part two over here. <clears throat> All right, so what I want to do now is I want to find a Z score of negative 40. So the z-score of negative 40 is negative 40 minus the mean of negative 32.6 divided by standard deviation. Negative 1.3-ish. Okay, so let's see what we're actually trying to work out. Here I've got my z-score 0. I've got my z-score of negative 1.3 here. And we want it to be from negative infinity all the way up to there. So technically we want this area here. All right, so to work out the probability that the random variable, or actually let's say that the z-score is less than or equal to negative 1.3 is equal to phi of negative 1.3, right? The area to the underneath the curve to the left of this z-score. The thing is, our table of values don't deal with negatives. It only deals with positive um, standard deviations. So the question is, um, what area is equivalent to this, is equal to that? Well, it's just a reflection, right? It's this bit here. So what I could do is, I could do, and that's going to be positive 1.3, is if I were to do 1 minus all of this to the left of 1.3, then I'll get that orange, which is going to be the same as that yellow. So, phi of negative 1.3 is the same as 1 minus phi of positive 1.3. Well, what's phi of 1.3? What's the area to the left of 1.3? A z-score of 1.3, we've got 0 0.9032. which is 0 0.0968. So how many scores would roughly lie in that interval? Therefore, 0 0.0968 times 1,000, which is 96.8, which is approximately equal to 97. So I'll say 97 scores for this one. I'll just say 330 for this.
All right, I'll get you to pause the video, have a go with part three yourself, and then I'll get you to check it in so. Okay, part three. So we want um, from negative 40 to negative 30. Now if I want to draw my bell curve, here's my z score zero. Negative 40, we've already established that that has a z score of negative 1.3. Okay, we've got that out over here. And to negative 30, we've already established that that has a z score of 0 0.456. Okay, so we want to work out the area underneath the curve between these two z scores. Well, if we want to do that, what do we need to do? Uh, I would probably propose that we work out um, the area underneath the curve from negative infinity up to here and then we can subtract this area here from negative infinity to negative 1.3 so the probability that the z score lies from negative 1.3 to 0 0.456 that's equal to phi of 0 0.456, the area underneath the curve to the left of 0 0.456, so all of this. I'm going to minus the area under the curve from negative infinity to negative 1.3, this bit. All right. 0 0.456. Let's have a look and see where that is. Actually, have we already done that? The area to the left of 0 0.456. Yeah, we've already worked that out here. Right? Area on the curve of to the left of 0 0.456 is 0 0.67. So we've already worked it out. 0 0.67. We're going to minus area on the curve to the left of negative 1.3. Well, we've actually already worked that out over here. 0 0.0968. And what do we get when we put that in our calculator? Point five seven three two. So I'm just going to multiply that probability by one thousand because this one thousand scores five hundred seventy three point two. So I'll just say about five hundred seventy three scores. Okay. Oh. All right. How many outliers would you expect to have in this data set? So to determine how many outliers there are, just remember, right, outliers. Here's our z-score zero. Here's our z-score two point seven and of negative two point seven. Outliers lie in this range out here. So what I could do is I could just work out one of them and then times it by two because they're exactly the same area. So I'm going to work out this one. And so to work out that area, I just need to do one minus the area on the curve to the left of it. Okay, so the probability that the z-score is greater than or equal to 2.7 is actually 1 minus the probability that it's less than or equal to 2.7. So I'm just going to write it like this. Okay, area on the curve to the left of the z-score of positive 2.7. Okay, so 2.7. Let's have a look. 2.7 is here. 0 0.9965. Zero point zero zero three five. Okay, so the area under the curve here is zero point zero zero three five, and it's going to be the same over here. 
So technically the number of outliers, number of outliers is going to be that probability times two, because it's both ends, times 1000 scores. Seven outliers. Okay, and that's it. Homework is 10E, questions 2, 3, 6, and 8.